We've just decided that some of you must be sleeping late because your ranks seem to have diminished here after the long night. But we've been through the long night and just wanted to say to you that we're very pleased with the results. Our target in the one house had been, <clears throat> as we said, uh, somewhere between uh, 17 and 27. Well, apparently it's turned out between 17 and 27 that we've lost in the house, but the main point is, and we're gratified that uh, we have not only maintain, <coughs> maintained control of the Senate, but that when we started uh, two years ago, we had 53 and we now have 54 Republican senators. And we look forward to working with this Congress now, in a bipartisan fashion, to solving the major problems that still have to be solved. What? That fell up there. I've heard his. You're saying the Senator Dole said that we had our, we would have trouble. Well, Bill, we've had trouble for 22 months. Uh, it, it's been a struggle every foot of the way. But uh, uh, we approached this. Uh, there have been concessions and compromises in both directions. Uh, on all of the major issues, and we expect to continue to work with the, the Congress in that way. No, no, no. Well, I heard all of that, and I think some of that is rhetoric of the campaign season, which is now over. Because the truth of the matter is, we've had some mid season uh, course changes. Uh, we never achieved all that we had asked in uh, uh, budget reductions. Uh, we did not, we compromised very uh, broadly in the tax program. We started asking for a 30% cut across the board retroactive to January 1st, 81. We settled for 25% uh, beginning in October of 1981. And uh, we then further, in order to get further budget cuts, uh, we were willing to compromise on the tax package uh, in which we agreed to certain tax increases. So I think there's been, uh, uh, there's been a, a fair exchange and a willingness to meet other people's views. Wait a minute. What's that? Well, as I've said, we will work with them in a bipartisan fashion uh, uh, in an attempt to solve these problems. We won't compromise on principle of what we absolutely believe is essential to the recovery. And we go into this session with the awareness that everyone must have, and that is that what has been done so far is apparently working very successfully. Sarah? Some conferences with the leaders of both parties, not just those in Congress, but others. Some uh, coalition of uh, conferences here by a program for the nation. Well, Sarah, we've done that. Uh, regularly throughout these these past 22 months. I meet in that cabinet room with bipartisan leadership groups, and I meet uh, even... Well, we have met with leaders, both Democrat and Republican, in the various fields that you've mentioned, whether it's business, finance, agriculture. Uh, we have, we've done that as a regular matter, of course. I don't think so at all. What? Well, it's not time to talk about such a thing yet. I've said that many times. But let me just let me just say it. First of all, uh, there's a smile on our faces, and uh, and intentionally so. If you look traditionally at what has happened in a situation of this kind, we have every reason to feel good. A president, newly elected, and who was brought in with him, 
uh, one house of the legislature, the, or the Congress, uh, in his election, this is the first time since 1928 that he has not lost two years later that House majority that he brought in with him. The average in times of economic stress, the average loss in this two-year election is 46. Uh, we feel very good about what's happened. Sure, we'd like to have won everything, but uh, we knew we weren't going to. Now that this election's over, could you give us your assessment of what sort of a campaign it was? Many of charge, it's one of the most backstabbing ones we've ever had. There were some tough words between you and Speaker O'Neill, particularly on unemployment and Social Security. Give us your assessment of the, uh, the election and the campaign. How all in all, I think it was, a, it was a very good campaign, but you can't make a blanket assessment. Individual campaigns are run by candidates. Uh, their own personalities and beliefs set the, uh, the tone for their, uh, for their campaigns. But uh, out in those states that uh, I went to, uh, the campaigning was on a positive, a positive basis that, that I saw and observed. And, and the vice president here has uh, gone much farther than I have in traveling around the country. And, uh, in seeing this, uh, have you well, what about seen too much of the? And well, yes, I think that uh, seizing upon both of those, I said before, and I and I will repeat, the charges that were made in order to try and frighten voters into uh, voting one way, the charges that were made with regard to Social Security, were absolutely without any foundation whatsoever. There was no truth behind them. There never was any secret plan written by us, and we're waiting uh, for the commission to come in with its recommendations on the needed reforms that must be made if that program is to remain uh, fiscally sound. Mr. President, two years ago, 18 months ago, you were hoping to try to regain or gain control of the House. Now you've had a 25 seat loss. I'm wondering why you are so optimistic today, why you think that's a good result. Well, Partly I go by history. I gave you what the average was or the average loss for when the economy was in the condition that the economy is today, but even the overall average loss is 31. So uh, we beat the odds. What are the issues that will dominate it? I, they will continue to be the economy, to continue doing the things that will uh, reduce unemployment, uh, the resolving of the issue we just talked before, that uh, there has been a long time postponement. The first time that I ever made a speech pointing out that Social Security was actuarially out of balance, and at that time by $300 billion, was in 1964. And in all the years since, nothing has been done to do anything about that, and now the imbalance is caught up with us, and uh, within the next several months, uh, we're going to have to actually face the issue of where the money's coming from. So I think that's a that's an issue that can no longer be swept under the rug. Last question, please. Uh, are we going to stay the course with high deficits? We're going to stay the course because the best way to reduce the high deficits is to continue uh, the reduction of unnecessary federal spending, spending and the necessity of restoring the economic base because the high deficits have come about uh, through several factors, but one of the most important is the high unemployment, which has taken people off the tax rolls and at the same time has uh, increased the output for subsistence for those people who are penalized by unemployment. So when we can get the economy back working again, uh, uh, that will take care of the revenues that are necessary to help us reduce those, uh, those deficits. Thank you, sir. Thank you. He, he said that. <laughs> Last question. What's that? No, Bill, if you really analyze the unemployment situation, there is a constant returning to work. 
and others. This is not a steady pool of individuals who have formed that, in, that unemployment. Uh, the, I'm trying to remember exactly the figure here, but I can tell you that it is a third or better of the people that um, are unemployed are unemployed for uh, less than six weeks. And uh, a figure that gets up to around 60 percent uh, are unemployed for less, less than six, 16 weeks. And so there are part of the present increase in unemployment with not additional people losing jobs, although some did. But a portion of the increase in unemployment was new people entering the workforce for the first time. It may, it may go up a few fractions of a percentage point, but what I'm saying is that the, uh, the unemployment problem is, is one of an ever-shifting pool of unemployed, and what we have to do is get the economy going, creating the new jobs to meet the increase in the, in the workforce, that the workforce is constantly increasing in size. I'm just smiling broadly. <laughs> California, as you might know, was one of the happier moments in the evening for me last night. Thank you, sir. No, he's a good candidate. Chick Hecht won. I wouldn't take that credit. Thank you, sir. Last question, sir. That's it. Thank That's you. It. He said See last you later. question. That was the last question.